Hi there, welcome to our Maytech team interview series. This is a collection of chats aimed to better understand what each role within Maytech is all about and to feature the great work members of our team are doing. My name is Carson, I am the digital marketing coordinator here at Maytech and today I will be talking with Matt, one of our principal technologists based in our London office. Matt, how's it going? Yeah, it's been good, thank you. Yourself? Good, good. Yeah, well, thank good. you so much for taking the time to chat with me. To get started with a little bit about you, how did you become interested in tech? Yeah, sure. So um, it sounds re really cliche, um, but when I was around 10, 11 years old, you know, got my first computer. First thing I did, uh, or one of the first things I did actually was, you know, tear it apart, see what was in the inside, got fascinated with the inner workings of, of the machine. Um, and then a couple of years on from that, when I was about 13, um, got into website development. So, you know, I was using the internet a lot more. Um, trying to think whether I was still on, on dial up back then. <laughs> uh, I think I might have been actually. Um, but then, yeah, you know, seeing these websites online, how were they made, uh, looking at the source code um, and then building my own websites from there, building like all sorts of various <laughs> fan type pages uh, for <laughs> games and things that were current at that time. Um, and then, yeah, you know, it, it just the, the journey just accelerated from there. So it's uh, completely self-taught. Um, so not been to, to university and studied computer science or anything like that. It's just um, born out of curiosity. That's kind of where the passion uh, came from, I guess. Nice, that's cool. cool. And outside of tech, <laughs> what other hobbies do you have? Yeah, um, I try to, try to keep um, fit and healthy. You know, being sat down all day um, isn't necessarily uh, great for your body uh, so try to do uh, a lot of swimming um, although I can't at the minute because of lockdown which is quite frustrating um, otherwise do a bit of yoga uh, and of course you know I'd probably say uh, goes to the pub is also a hobby <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good one to have maybe not during lockdown but outside of that yeah and had you worked at all in the public sector before you joined Maytech yeah, absolutely. So I, I worked on a public sector engagement um, for a consultancy that I was working for prior to, to joining Maytech. Um, and it was then I was kind of um, engrossed, if you like, to, to the public sector uh, ways of working. Nice. And how do you find working in the public sector? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's great. Um, you know, it's a completely different set of challenges to what you typically face in, in the private sector. And one of the things that I like most about that is that there is this, uh, there's almost like a, a stigma attached to, to, to public sector working in that mm. it's, it's slow paced and the government is left behind. You're not gonna be working with, with cool technology. Um, there is an element of truth to that, um, but the majority of the work that, that we're doing now at Made Tech and a lot of the work that I'm focused on is uh, digital transformation. So taking mm. that stuff, you know, that isn't cool and fun and exciting and, you know, bringing it into the modern world using new exciting technologies which are uh, better and more sustainable for these organizations um, that we that we're working with um, so yeah you know the, the challenges and, and projects that you get to work on as a result of that in public sector uh, are really exciting cool cool yeah it sounds like fun projects to be a part of and kind of different from maybe other public sector areas to work in as well so that's cool and how long have you been at made tech I've been at Made Tech for around about 10 months now, I think. Um, honestly, it's like a blur. It's gone <laughs> so fast. Um, probably doesn't help that I joined in, in lockdown. Um, that was a very strange thing to, to do, to move from one company to the other, you know, without actually meeting anybody, just getting uh, a MacBook delivered in, in the post. And, and that was it, joining a video <laughs> call on, on day one. Um, but yeah, I've been here for about 10 months and uh, really enjoying it so far. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think I've been here about the same amount of time and the onboarding process, even though it is remote, so it's not quite yeah. the way you anticipate an onboarding process to be. I think our team has done such a great job at making it as smooth as possible and making yeah. it kind of feel like you already know people <clears throat> within the company, which is really nice. I'm actually pretty sure we were in the same onboarding week. I um, think so. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, come a long way since then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what attracted you to Made Tech? Um, yeah, so, you know, having worked on, on the previous public sector engagements, uh, I knew the type of work um, that was going to be involved. Um, so I had a few conversations with Luke 
uh, our CTO uh, around about the company and and why Maytech e exists um, in the first place. And, you know what is Maytech's mission and what is its vision. Um, and I was really bought into that into that vision. Um, and then as a result, um, yeah, here I am. Nice, nice. And what does your role here involve? So typically. Um, I work with senior senior leaders in the, in the organizations that we go into to align um, technical vision with with business goals um, and strategy. Um, occasionally, I get my hands dirty, you know, developing proof of concepts to to introduce new technologies into the business, uh, mm -hmm. uh, introduce architecture principles and, and things like that. Um, but alongside uh, client work, I do work to support the business as well. Um, so a lot of bid work that we that we do, you know, with it being public sector, um, a lot of the work that we win is is through RFPs and the like. Um, mm -hmm. So getting my uh, hands dirty in that, um, working with Ian and uh, the, facing the challenges and pressures that come with those tight 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 deadlines. <laughs> That's going to have to be edited out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you know, so work at helping support Maytech. Um, you know, landing some of those contracts um, and also getting involved uh, with recruitment, you know, building out uh, our engineering team um, for Maytech. Um, so yeah, it's quite a quite a diverse role, really. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. And I bet recruitment is quite a big part of your role right now as well. But yeah. it's great. It's great to see the team growing so much. And it's nice to meet all these new people coming in too. <laughs> okay. and what do you like most about being a principal technologist? Yeah, sure. So I think for, for me, it's taking companies on that on that journey of transformation is hugely rewarding. You know, when you start the engagement, you typically do uh, an as is versus to be state analysis. And then, you know, at the end of the engagement, you typically do uh, a retro. Um, and then, you know, when you're actually working on the on the day to day and within the, the project, you kind of forget um, the steps that you're actually going along and it's hard to, to to see the journey that you're actually going along until you do that retrospective at the end of the project and then you just get to see how far you've brought this organization on that journey of change and the benefits that they're then going to reap as uh, as a result of that um, so that is probably the most uh, rewarding thing for me I think. Yeah, yeah definitely you could see that. What would you say are some of the most challenging things you find about the role? <laughs> um, so, you know, organizations don't uh, pay consultancies a lot of money to solve easy problems, right? Uh, they pay them to solve real complex and, and challenging problems. Mm. So, you know, projects can be bad for, bad for a whole host of reasons, you know, tight deadlines, uh, unreasonable demands, not enough resources, you know, the list goes on. Um, so I think, you know, if, if you work in this industry um, long enough, operating as a consultant, you're guaranteed to experience at least one of those at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the most challenging thing is knowing how to navigate those types of situations and how to how to get out and, and see the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that's probably the most challenging thing uh, for me. Sure. What is one of your favorite projects you've worked on? So for me, the most project is always, um, so the most recent project is always the favorite. Um, you know, every project is different, but every, every new project that you go on, that is like your baby that you then kind of nurturing and, and taking on a journey. Um, so yeah, it's very really hard to say what my favorite project is. Um, I think the, the current engagement that I'm on, why that is probably uh, uh, my current favorite is that um, it's really helping align um, a whole, team of engineers to a set of principles um you know allowing them to adopt better ways of working um allowing them to uh, see the, the the current state of of uh technology that's available to them and kind of bringing them on that journey of change um you know stuff i alluded to previously on what i really like about this role um so this particular role i'm working on now actually um has a lot of that in it cool Nice. And do you have any advice for anyone who wants to be a principal technologist? This is probably more down to, to uh, more junior uh, members, but, you know, it's not something that can be rushed. It's something that comes uh, with, with experience. So, you know, getting some consultancy experience under your belt is going to be hugely advantageous to, to uh, getting yourself into the principal technologies uh, type role because it's only been operating in a consultancy due to the nature 
of the of the consultancy work given that you know each project is quite short-lived uh, there's always an end in sight in each project typically has a different set of challenges and the reason why working in consultancies is is great is because you get so much experience in such a compact amount of time as you work versus what you would typically get working in say a product organization mm. so i would say you know don't rush it um get that get that ex experience and if you can um and if it is something that you really want to pursue get that consultative experience on the about cool yeah and i think that's something that made tech really like ingrains in the culture here is that no matter where you are in your career like there's always opportunities to learn and there's so many people who want to mentor and help others grow within the company um, which is really great yeah. absolutely um and yeah the, you know that is probably one of the other things that attracted me to to, to made tech as well uh because they recognize uh that you know people are want to get to go on different journeys so whatever journey you want to go on you know that support mechanism is, is going to be put into place to allow you to, to go on that journey. Sure, sure. And since we are still working from home due to COVID, what has been one of the biggest <clears throat> challenges you've had to face since lockdown in this position and how did you overcome it? Cutting my own hair, you know, as you can see, <laughs> as you can probably see by the, the peaky blinders cut that I've accidentally given to myself. Uh, but no, um, I, you know, it's difficult for everybody, right? Um, the amount of mental uh, stress it, it's putting on, on people, not just because uh, we're all uh, uh, stuck inside of our homes, but because we actually find ourselves working a lot more. So mm -hmm. knowing that, finding that point of knowing when to switch off is incredibly difficult. Um, learning how to be really strict with your time. So say, you know, anything past 6 p.m., you know, that is a hard stop for work. Actually putting those things in, into place because mm -hmm. When we all started lockdown back in, in, in March of last year, it was all new, right? And so we didn't know what what was actually, uh, what we were gonna be faced with and you know how long this thing was gonna go on for. And we didn't know how to manage it. And I think a lot of people ended up burning themselves out because they were unable to switch off. Um, you know, it's just so easy because you're already at home already to just keep on working way into the night to like 9, 10 p.m., right? And then, you know, you go to bed and then you work, you're, you're sat in front of your desk again at eight o'clock. So your brain is just constantly in overdrive. And I think knowing when to, to switch off and, and looking after yourself is probably um, one of the biggest challenges that not just me, but a lot of people have, have faced. So being really strict in that, you know, making sure that I leave the house every day, right? Because it's so easy to let days go by without leaving the house. So I try to get out for a, at the very, very least a walk every day, um, you know, whether that's on my lunch break, just to kind of absorb some of the fresh air. Um, or some people have, have, have go for like a, a walk in the morning, right? Just to go for, to get like a commute in, right? Um, that's not what I do. Uh, that I've tried that; it didn't really work for me. Um, but yeah, just trying to look after yourself is, is is being the biggest challenge and being strict with that. Yeah, definitely I can definitely relate with that. It's just so easy to keep working when you're already at your desk and you're already at home. But setting those strict like end times and sticking to it is something that's really beneficial, I think, for everyone to do, even yeah. in non-COVID times when they're in the office as well. So yeah, cool. And what do you like most about working at Made Tech? Yeah, I like the fact that it's it's very, very people focused, you know, kudos to to the people team and the amount of effort they put into actually uh, ensuring that it is such a people focused uh, organization. You know, a lot of companies say they're people focused, but they're actually on um, not to throw shade at uh, other companies and, and companies that have been a part of in the past. Um, but yeah, the, the difference here is is huge. Um, you know, any pastoral care that you need, you're going to get any progression that you want to take your career, you're going to have a support mechanism in place uh, to support that. Uh, and, you know, your well-being is really looked after. The fact that you get limited holidays, um, any any break that you need, um, you know, that's yours to take. Um, so, yeah, it's I really love the fact that it is so people focused. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that's something I hear a lot in these interviews that I've been doing with people is just the culture mm -hmm. is, is so amazing here. And the fact that which, we all like care about each other as well. Like, yeah, which in itself speaks for it. That speaks for itself, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. So one last question for you. Do you have any books or resources you would recommend for someone interested in this position? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, this, this role is probably um, the books are probably specific to this role. Um, so a couple of that come off the top of my head that have been really helpful to me. Um, crucial, conversa crucial Conversations um, is definitely a good one, knowing how to handle um, difficult conversations, which in this position, you know, there are a lot of those conversations that need to be had. Um, team Topologies is, is a really great one. Um, so, which is helpful for organizational transformation type work, which uh, I find myself doing a lot of as well. Um, Accelerate is another good one. Um, you know, implementing a really solid DevOps culture into organizations. Um, yeah, I think those are probably my, my, my top three at the minute. Cool, sounds good. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. It was really interesting hearing about your experience and what your role is like. And if anyone would like to get in touch with Maytech or has any more questions for Matt about his role here, I will add our contact information to the description below. Please feel free to reach out and be sure to stay tuned for our next Maytech team interview coming next month. Again, thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.